The legal battle between Live Golf and PGA Tour continues, but Patrick Reed's lawsuit has given the battle a new twist. The Live Pro Golfer has launched a defamation lawsuit against the Golf Channel's commentator, Brandel Shambly, and get this, he's seeking $750 million in damages. Today, we'll be looking into the biggest lawsuit in golfing history. Why is the star seeking damages from Shambly? Who do we think will win? Let's dive right into it. First off, what do we know so far about the lawsuit? Well, the court documents were filed this Tuesday in the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of Texas Houston Division. According to them, Reed alleges that Golf Channel analyst Shambly has actively targeted Reed to destroy his reputation and create hate and a hostile work environment for the player. Yes, the 2018 Masters winner claims he's been the victim of calculated malicious attacks that have not only made it difficult for him to enjoy golf, but have had a direct effect on his livelihood for the past nine years. By now, most of us who followed the Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard trial are well aware of what a defamation lawsuit entails. The suit seeks in excess of $750 million in damages. And in civil cases like this, plaintiffs have to prove whether a defendant is liable, not whether the defendant is guilty. But what really led to Reed's filing this multi million dollar lawsuit. If you've ever tuned into the Golf Channel, it shouldn't come off as a shock to you. It's a well-known fact on a tour that Mr. Reed has been abused and endured more than any other golfer from spectators. Fans have not only been allowed to scream obscenities at him, but in fact, have been glorified by NBC's Golf Channel for doing so. But is this gross exaggeration, or is there any truth to the golfer's story? After all, Shambly's just another cheeky fellow who hypes the crowd up with sarcastic retorts at the players. To say he crosses the line is one thing, but to claim the channel has malicious intent against one player might be taking things too far. But Reed came to court with the receipts. Again, if we look at the court documents released via reports for Courthouse News Service, we find Reed's claim that Shambly has a history of calling him a cheater. The commentators also criticized Reed and other golfers for leaving the PGA Tour for the Saudi-funded Live Golf series. Yep, you guessed it. At the heart of the defamation lawsuit is the classic PGA versus Live rivalry. The lawsuit alleges that Shambly and the Sports Network have been in cahoots with PGA Tour. The tour's executives and commissioner Jay Monahan have conspired to engage in a pattern and practice of defaming the plaintiff, even going so far as to call it misreporting of information with reckless disregard for the truth. And how exactly did the Golf Channel manage this? The suit claims they've been purposefully omitting key facts to mislead the public and actively target Mr. Reed since he was 23 years old. No, it wasn't just harmless teasing and poking fun for viewers, says the suit. It was a planned vendetta to destroy Liv and its golf professionals. And the golf analyst was at the center of it all. Shambly has become Golf Channel's primary mouthpiece and agent to push his defamatory agenda to inflict severe damage to Mr. Reed and other golfers signed with Liv, accused the lawsuit. Seems like the channel has nothing better to do than take part in high school gossip and name calling. Now, guilty or not, did Shambly's comments actually lead to Reed's downfall? The American pro golfer has been a polarizing figure in the golf world, often found at the center of multiple controversies. Shambly's rebukes added fuel to the fire. Take the 2019 fiasco, for instance. A camera caught Reed illegally improving his lie in a bunker, and he penalized two strokes at the Hero World Challenge in 2019. To this, Shambly cheekily said that the video is going to haunt him around, like the video of Nixon saying, I'm not a crook. The 32-year-old then sent a cease and desist letter, demanding the 60-year-old former pro to stop flouting that he intentionally broke the rules. You can tell Reed's pretty pissed at the analyst, as the suit referred to Shambly as fallen short of ever rising to the accomplished level of Mr. Reed. And the salty live golfer further accused Shambly of rebuking him in 2021 when he received relief for an embedded ball. But Reed's had picked it up before rules officials could inspect the lie. He maintains that such hateful opinions of Shambly have led to fans heckling him after tournaments and calling him a cheater. But wait, the complaints against Shambly took a darker 
return. Shambly wouldn't have expected his worst remarks highlighted in an official document like this. Reed's attorneys also pointed out the objection to the commentator's remarks that Reed would have no problem playing golf for Stalin, Hitler, Mao Zedong, Pol Pot, and Putin. Yes, the man said this on live TV. The suit reads that the statement was false because their client wasn't involved in any such thing. Less creative insults that Shambly has thrown over him include personal attacks like you jackass calling him a coward, a piece of shit, an ungrateful bitch, oh and who can forget the fan favorite, everyone hates you, cheater. You really don't have to work too hard to prove defamation if a man shouting at you to dig your grave and die on live TV, do you? Reed's team believes this proves how the defendants maliciously and intentionally caused damage to the golfer's life. And who do we think has got the upper hand in the legal battle? Now, as much as Reed has a strong case for him, we have to consider two things. His suit was filed by Larry Clayman, a Florida-based attorney that's often on the losing end of a number of defamation lawsuits. Remember the Arizonian politician, Sheriff Joe, who sued several national media outlets for defaming him and costing him a U.S. Senate seat? Yes, Clayman was behind his loss too. So we won't have high hopes for Reed's legal team. And with the legal climate in the golf world, the PGA Tour seems to be winning. Last week, a judge ruled against three live golfers from playing in the FedEx playoffs in the first round of the antitrust battle between the golf circuits. Things aren't looking too good for Reed, who has played in two live golf events so far, with more to come. Now in other news. First off, the LPGA Texas event gets a new sponsor. This fall, LPGA's Texas Stop is getting a brand new name as Ascendant National Title steps in to co-sponsor the event with Volunteers of America. The partnership's a new multi-year one and will be held on September 29th, October at Old American Golf Club, just outside Dallas. What's more is that the field of 132 will also play for an increased purse of $200,000 to a whopping $1.7 million total. Not to mention that seven of the top 10 players in the world are early entries into the tournament. We're talking about Jin Young Ko, Nelly Korda, Lydia Ko, and more. Moving on, UT's Travis Vick fell behind in US Amateur, but still felt he had a great year. The University of Texas star's presence at the US Amateur didn't turn out as planned. He lost his opening match to Aussie Connor McKinney, 3 and 1, in round 64. Vic might have started the week in solid fashion, posting a 69 in the stroke play event, but bad luck followed him as he limped home with a 76 to finish T39. But the player's far from heartbroken at this defeat. He went on to say that the experience was incredible, as being able to win a national championship for UT after everything his team went through was no small feat. They were preseason number one and had a lot of hype surrounding them, with which came a lot of hate. The US Open was just a bonus after the win, and going there and experiencing everything that a US Open entails was the cool part. As the happy go lucker golfer recalls, this was the largest crowd he'd ever played in front of, and it felt like he was watching a movie. Just getting a perfect line on Will Zalatoris's putt that he barely missed seemed to make up for losing. And finally, golfer is set to become the first trans woman to win LPGA Tour card. Haley Davidson's about to make golf history. After seeing off competition at Stage 1 qualifiers, she's set to win the coveted Ladies Professional Golf Association Tour card, becoming the first transgender woman to earn one. The 29-year-old shot a 70 on Thursday and hit a 76 during the second round on Friday. Now, according to LPGA's rules, any player who shoots under 88 after all three rounds earns a 2023 Epson Tour status. So we've got our fingers crossed for the golfer. Davidson last competed as a male golfer in 2015, undergoing hormone therapy and completing her transition in 2021. Since LPGA removed their female at birth requirement in 2020, fans are excited to see their first trans woman golfer join the big leagues. And that's a wrap for this video. Who do you think will win the defamation lawsuit, Reed or Shambly? Let us know in the comments below. Do give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell notification for similar videos. See you in the next one.